Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this final screencast for mm -hmm. Plan 20401 Environmental Policies and Designations for this year. Uh, what we're going to go through today is a shortened version of tomorrow's lecture where we'll be talking about the, the exam, the structure, and what you can be expecting to do on the exam. So we'll start here, and so standard exam, two hours, two questions from six. There are no questions, no, sorry, no sections, so you can just pick whichever two questions you think you'd like to answer best, um, which allows you the scope to think about the way in which the, the big ideas might work together in the module and how they fit together. Uh, in terms of what you should be trying to do, I would say prepare. Uh, bring in literature from the reading list and beyond, so don't just repeat uh, the lecture material back to me. Uh, one of the big issues is for you to please read and answer the actual question as it's written. Don't just write the answer to the question as you think it is, because that will score quite poorly. And make sure that you structure your answers, answers as a normal essay question. So an introduction, a main body of the argument, and then a set of ideas or conclusions. So really what we're expecting to see is two proper essays, two um, well, uh, well researched and well written essays that use examples and to, to explain what's going on. As I say, don't just repeat the lecture materials because uh, to get high marks in the exam you have to go beyond that and show additional reading or additional engagement with the, um, the literature or different examples. Um, we expect you to do in-text citations, so like the one on the screen here, no need for a reference list, so I would spend time working out which examples you might want to use and then how you might want to bring that references in. And if in doubt, you can use diagrams to help um, show your points. Um, in terms of um, getting stressed, I would say the more you prepare, the more you think about the way in which the, the big ideas work together and how they might fit with the, the overarching ideas of the module, the, the more prepared you will be. Don't just try and hide under some coats and make sure it'll be okay and don't cheat. We have had people before bringing in um, notes and they've been caught. We've had people eating their notes and they're still being caught. So just make sure that you are you are prepared. Now in terms of the, the types of things that we've talked about in the module and that will run through uh, all the questions, you should think about policy hierarchies and the interactions related to scale. So how do different policies and different actors work at the international, national and subnational level? And what does this mean for the, the focus or the employment and then evaluation of policy? This is linked, of course, to, to who these stakeholders are. So is it national government? Is it uh, environmental NGOs? Is it the, the, the corporate and business sector? Or is it local communities? And all of these people have a potential role to play in the, the focus of uh, environmental policy, but also have an influence in terms of what can and can't be done. So you might want to think about, about renewable energy there or fossil fuels or the way in which different um, approaches to conservation or, or development in terms of housing or other infrastructure may or may not uh, support or go against different ideas of designations. Um, We'll also, there'll also be questions on there about designations, so think about what you've been taught in the classes, so the Green Belt National Parks, AUMBs, and conservation designations, and whether or not they're, they're fit for purpose. And if they are so, then how is that relevant to what they were created to do, and how they might go in the future. So within all these overarching themes, there are issues around temporality and around how policy and designations may or may not have changed over time. You'll need to think about spatial variation, so the way in which um, policy and designations can work at a single scale or a, a nested or a hierarchical set of scales, um, and how this then um, influences the governance structures and the variation in terms of what can and can't be done. So this understanding of change over time, some understanding of spatial variation, and therefore the differences in how uh, environmental policies are formed, are, are enacted and are, are managed, and the way in which designations might play a role in this are actually quite key. And something to remember throughout all this is that all of these things will change over time. So we're looking for critiques or more nuanced understanding of how these things have happened and why. And so in terms of the things that you might want to think about, it's like, why do we have environmental policies and designations? What role do they play? So is it about uh, dealing with air pollution or health issues? Is it about dealing with um, conservation extinctions? 
And so these big ideas about resources and their management, how they impact and influence uh, human health and livability and well-being, or whether or not we're thinking about the economic value or the, the, the conservation of the ecological value of something which is becoming extinct. So these big ideas can be around weather, around climate, around economics, around political structures, around social and cultural and standards of landscape. And this is where you've got opportunities to, to bring in a number of different examples to try and show uh, how policy has been formed and how it's changed over time and what value that has in the real world. We'll also be looking at who controls environmental policy and designations. And so there's this growing internationalization of environmental policy and the effectiveness of these debates in shaping more forward looking, more resilient, more sustainable environmental management. So it might be about Greta Thunberg, it might be about Donald Trump, it might be about the way in which the EU is promoting conservation through its, its management techniques, it might be about the British government or the Greater Manchester Spatial Framework. But all of these things are disc offer discussions of how different stakeholders can work together or work against each other to present, think, to present policy which is more uh, resilient to the future. So it's not just about what we've done before, where we go, where we're going, but also this this current amalgamation of different voices and different ideas, which are which are really shaping the discourse and environmental policy in the media, but also in practice in academia and in government policy. And this, of course, will have an impact on what policy is put forward and how designations are presented and whether or not they're still valuable. So then it might be worth thinking about the way in which um, AOMBs or national parks or green belts were created, what their purpose was, and specifically what their value is now. So are they still um, developing and, and delivering the same ideas that they were when they were first created? So things we talked about last week in the Peak District. Or are they now performing different functions and different services? And if they are doing different things, how is the designation uh, changing over time to to respect that and, and to help support that. And in these conversations, the the designations may not be the same as they were previously, and that may be a bad thing. And it's down to you to really tease out the, the nuances of this. And we can do the same with, with policy. So how has policy changed since 2010 and the, the election, or well, the formation of the Conservative Coalition government? And how has that uh, changed where we were from New Labour or even previously? So. This understanding of policy evolution, of policy focus and policy value, along with designations in terms of what they're supposed to be doing and how they're supposed to be doing it, will be quite crucial to how you might answer some of the questions. And that brings us to this, this notion of, of who's involved and, and whether they're actually valuable or not. So are green belts still valuable? Are national parks in the USA valuable? Is the Paris Agreement valuable in terms of policy discourse? Or are these things just there to to limit the way that people or business actually engages with the environment? And if they are limiting what people are doing, then is that um, respectful of the way the world is changing? Is it respectful of things like ownership and equitability and access to, to, to the landscape? And if not, what things might we do to actually improve these things? So th the usefulness of, of designations and policy will be a very subjective discussion but it should be couched it should be based in an understanding from the literature about where policy has come from where we're going in the future and these things can be aligned more specifically to, to some of the weekly themes that we talked about and this is just going down the uh, the lectures that we had so scale focus and interaction of policy mandates so what scale is policy created at how is it developed and what's it actually trying to do so maybe things like the water framework directive or the european landscape convention or the EU Habitats Directive and how these have been employed. Again, looking at who's involved with these ideas, be it um, in a positive or a negative way, and the role in which is shaping policy and the equity of the process. So is everybody able to have access to the, the structures and the consultative process of policy formation? And if not, how does that affect what actually happens? and things like should we be cascading national policy down if the, the local context isn't being captured by that national policy. And again, this can be thought about from a designations perspective. So are uh, the, the reasons that we have national parks the same now as they were at the time? And how are different disciplines or different areas such as uh, business or more minerals extractions, um, maybe 
working against sort of the conservation agendas to try and um, not exploit but utilize the the resources that that lay in national parks and a lot of these discussions about scale and focus and designations and stakeholders can be seen in the way in which Greenbelt national parks and areas of outstanding natural beauty and other conservation designations are presented in both the literature and in practice and so some of the, those the, those latter things we've had lectures on them and Phil's, and, and Phil's talked about them as well so finally as I say don't panic read the questions do what it asks you to do um, it's not a trap everything in the exam has been covered in the lectures um, the materials in terms of the lecture captures and the lecture slides that, that we have uh, are on Blackboard so you can actually go and get that, get them and if you spend the time reading and looking at the, 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 the lectures themselves and the, the PowerPoint for the actual lecture tomorrow you'll start to see where these themes might align. So you think about the big themes and how they might be employed on the, the specific uh, weekly ideas then you should get an, a, a better understanding and appreciation of how these things all together all, all fit together so good luck don't panic it's not a trap and i'll see you all tomorrow to go through this in the lecture in more detail bye bye